Hello there, my name is Ismos and uh, let's talk about ragdolls in Blender 2.8. Uh, yes, so I've set up this scene here uh, with a few ragdolls. Uh, you can see they are reacting to physics. Yeah, some of them are intersecting with, uh, yeah, going through the wall, but I think that's because uh, the force here is a bit too high that I pushed it with it. Uh, so it's kind of getting an error and uh, maybe I could just increase uh, the solver iterations to Im improve uh, the integrity of the simulation. Uh, but uh, basically, yeah. I've already done a tutorial on how to set up ragdolls, uh, something like this, uh, that reacts to physics. And uh, But what I didn't show in the tutorial is how to link it uh, to a mesh. So it turns out uh, it's quite uh, a task. It's not as easy or obvious as uh, I thought it would be. Uh, so that's why it, it took me a few experimentations uh, to get it to work. And uh, uh, I'll be... Uh, uploading a time lapse of how I did how I set up the entire thing because explaining it uh, step by step is a little bit is quite a lot uh, of work uh, since it's, uh, it's it's quite complicated uh, setting up this rig is uh, very easy uh, but uh, linking it actually linking it is not that difficult but because what I'm doing is simply parenting adding a a copy constraint, a child of constraint. I'm making these these bones or amateurs child objects to the rigid bo bodies, uh, to the rigid ob objects like here. Uh, but uh, getting it to work exactly as, to getting the pivot points uh, to work exactly as it as they're supposed to be, uh, to have these hinges and uh, joints be exactly where they're supposed to be is uh, quite of work and needs some explanation so i think watching the time lapse might help uh so that when i come to the uh explaining the entire thing it might be easier for you to understand as it might be easier for me to explain as you already have seen me do some of the work uh but maybe let me just do a quick breakdown of how it works here so you have this a joint like this let me just maybe do cube then another joint here so if these are all rigid bodies they'll just fall down so to uh, so if I wanted to make maybe a hand so this would be a joint and uh, here a, jo a shoulder joint here I uh, would need um, let me get an empty you need an empty where did I add that okay you need an empty like this uh, to give it a, a rigid body constraint uh, to connect uh, this uh, with this and now if I play uh, because they're all uh, active rigid bodies uh, they're just falling down so if I make this shoulder sta a static uh, by giving it a type of passive then you can see that uh, this is connected to this and uh, is staying in position uh, because uh, the rigid body constraint that I'm using is a type of fix. If I change it to point, then it can loosen up and uh, behave like a joint, a point joint. Uh, so uh, if I also duplicate this and uh, have it here, play back and uh, then connect this to this, you can see we get that exact behavior. Uh, then you would just get an armature. So let me just create an armature here. A few bones. I just make sure that uh, the pivot point is exactly the bone starts and ends where you see these uh, joints. So now uh, to have them connected uh, to these uh, points, uh, to these objects, you would just select the bone uh, you select uh, the object you want to parent it to for so in this case it would be this uh, here because it's that shoulder uh, bone uh, so I'll select that and then select the armature and then go to pause mode using control tab or just go to the drop down here control tab and select that bone and use the shortcut control shift C uh, to get uh, the constraints menu or just go to the bone constraints and add a child of constraint so i'm just going to use the shortcut Control shift c and then child constraint and uh, then make sure you set inverse 
uh, on so that you don't have any movement uh, in the bone. Now, if we play back, you can see I get that. Now, this bone is also moving. Uh, it's going to cause a few issues here uh, because if I now par do the same thing for this, so select this, then this, and then Control Tab, uh, then Shift C, Control Shift C, Child of, uh, Set Inverse, Playback. See, it's not really following uh, this object, uh, this rigid body as it's supposed to be, and the reason for that, I is copying, is copying the transformations uh, as it's a child of this object, but uh, because it's also because it has a, this child constraint, but uh, because it's also parented to this, to its original bond, uh, this original bond, because if, if you go to, uh, to pause mode and rotate this, you can see this is parented to this, so it's following that bond. So make sure that uh, we don't get that offset that you see there, uh, so that it follows exactly this uh, object here. We need to, we need to clear uh, this connection. We need to, as said to clear this apparent connection so you have to go to tab into edit mode and then clear parent so alt p to clear uh, the parent and make sure you also disconnect uh, the bone and then clear parent so that if we are in pause mode when i move this bone this bone doesn't move i'm also just going to clear the position of this I think because I have this as a child object for this, I'm getting that. So let me just redo this. Uh, shift, select this, and then this. Control tab, shift, control shift C, copy child, set inverse so that uh, it retains uh, its original position. Now, if we play back, we get this. Don't worry about this. I, uh, there are a few things I had in setup right here for this one, but uh, basically that's how you would set uh, the bonds to work with uh, your rigid body system. And uh, now all you're left with uh, is to decide what type of connection, what type of joints uh, these are. So if I want this to be a hinge, a hinge joint, I just set it as a hinge. Uh, but uh, the depending on the direction of uh, your empty so if we go to the empty and change uh this the display as to single arrow you can see that uh, this is pointing up so our hinges are facing that direction so if i rotate this 90 degrees uh, it should also change uh, the hinge uh, direction and i can also do this for the, this do the same for this here rotate this 90 degrees and now you can see uh, make sure you also change uh, the the bone. Now you can also use uh, the angle here to limit how far this can bend. So, and uh, if you have a mesh uh, like this mesh here, like this body mesh, say, let me actually just use this. Uh, just duplicate this and uh, remove this armature. So I can just scale this up, scale up the hand so that the joints are aligned with the... So I can do something like... Uh, so if I have this mesh being controlled, being deformed by this armature, so I select this and then this control P Amateur with automatic weights, you can see that uh, uh, this bends correctly, except that uh, since I don't have any other amateurs here, I'm just getting that issue here. But uh, that is how you set this up, and uh, basically, that, that's what I did here. Uh, you may notice in the video that I ordered, I added uh, some spheres here. Maybe I'll do another tutorial explaining why I did that. Uh, because you can see they're not just uh, the empty constraints. The, I have two connectors here and then uh, another empty here. So maybe I'll do another tutorial on explaining how I, why I did that. But uh, uh, this also 
works uh, the same way. So uh, that's how you get to this. So you'd have to make all uh, the the rigid bodies for that and then connect them to their respective uh, armatures to get something like that. I'm also thinking of uh, making, uh, kind of creating another armature here, maybe duplicating this so that I can, uh, duplicating this uh, armature uh, so that it can control uh, the rigid body system when I don't want uh, to be, when I want to animate uh, this body by hand. Uh, so I also want that to be to be able to do that. Uh, maybe that, that will be a different tutorial for that. But uh, yeah, so that's how you handle rigid bodies. Uh, again, I'll be uploading the time lapse on how I set up uh, the ragdolls on my second channel, Blender Money. Uh, so if you want to, to watch the entire time lapse, how I set up everything, uh, yeah, you can watch that. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next uh, video.